Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum, Sam, and today's a little bit of a different video. We're having a look at Japan's new rules and regulations regarding their whiskey. So I guess it's fitting to be drinking Japanese yeah. whiskey. So come with a classic hibiki. We'll pour a bit of a hibiki because I think that it's significant, it's symbolic, just to kind of what to what we're talking about today. Now, um, Japan's been making whiskey for well over 100 years now, um, and there are some big players in the game, Suntory, Nika, this is Suntory, um, and they've been doing it for a while, and they've been doing it well, but they have lacked any real regulations and laws. It's like the Wild West. Yeah, they could really, like, legally, they could um, get something from Scotland, uh, put a new label on it, and a nice, Japanese styled label and then sell it as Japanese whiskey. They can legally pull that off. Um, now Scotch, like Scotland won't even let um, whiskey that is off, they won't let whiskey off their shores in anything except a sealed bottle be called Scotch. So if you want, you know, a barrel of Scotch um, and you're planning on just Labeling it and sending it out in a different country, you can't, you can't legally call it Scotch because Scotland won't allow you to call yeah. something Scotch if it leaves the country in anything except a finished product bottle. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. Very well protected because it's such a highly regarded thing. Yeah. Um, Japan, however, lots of you don't you never know what the hell you're getting. You get bottles. They look Japanese. They look awesome. Cool little blurb at the back, and it's just you don't know. Tastes like yeah, they different actually things. taste exactly like scotch. Yeah, well. they sometimes they're just island. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. So this is headed by Japan Liquor and Spirits Makers, um, the association. So these new things that they've put in place only affect members of that association. So it's not like suddenly trust every bottle you find, but it is a massive step in going towards like real bring back the trust for Japanese whiskey. Because it has taken a hit uh, in, in the recent couple of years, because it did explode in popularity, and then it has—it's still super popular. Yeah. But like the boom the, isn't there the, anymore. The, I think it. I don't know. I, like I feel. I, I think it's or there to an extent. But like the whiskey nerds and stuff, I feel like the ones who picked up on plateaued probably. Yeah, more. they're they've they're realized the issues with it. All right, as of April first. This year, 2021, um, the members of this association will move forward with implementing the new standards. That's their cutoff date. So they're, they're, they're going to be starting to use the new things. And I'm going to go over the regulations that these guys have put in place because it's pretty, it's pretty good, especially for Japan. Like it's a good, good first step. Do we know which distilleries are in the major ones, surely? I do not know. We'll have to come up with an actual list at some point. Um, but just do your research. If I can find it, we'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, if it's easy to find, we'll put it up. But if not, maybe just do your research. Um, yeah. I think I think the thing is, because of this, you're going to see an effect where people who didn't want to be, well, not didn't want to be, but didn't see the point of being part of this association before, the legit distillery, they just didn't bother. But now, because of what this being a member of this means, I think you're going to see a lot of legit Japanese, you know, distilleries and stuff jumping to be part of that association so people know they're actually, you know, Japanese. legit Japanese yeah. whiskies. And you'll see the ones that don't jump over and you'll be able to see, you know, you can be a little bit sus about them. All right, so malted grain must always be used. So you're going to have to get some sort of malted grain, malted barley or something most likely, um, but you're also able to use as well as the malted grain, your any other cereal grains, um, and that includes you know just your regular ones, so your wheats and stuff like that. Um, now the water, the water has to be uh, in the water production must be from Japan, so it has to be Japanese water that they use in the distilleries. Which I mean, that's not really a big. I mean, I feel like already if you were distilling in Japan, you were using your own water because. Unless Why the hell would you use anyone else's water? And if you need water for distillation and you're not legit, then you're not going to be distilling anyway, so it won't matter. So this is one that's kind of like, it's good, but it's not like, it doesn't mean much in regards to people having just to overhaul that, their system. It gets rid you know, of that doubt though. It does. I think that's just what this is all about. Uh, aging. So spirits must be aged in Japan in wooden casks. 
Uh, so they're not cutting out, uh, they're not limiting you like uh, bourbon and scotch and stuff. They're wooden casks. It's kind of like Irish whiskey where you, you've got your options. You can do your misenara, you can do whatever you want. So it's just any kind of wood. Yeah, so as long as it's you know safe for human consumption, you can choose it, which gives them yeah. a lot of freedom, which a lot of countries don't have. But it has to be aged for a minimum of three years. The saccharification, fermentation, and distillation must be carried out at a distillery on Japan's shore. So it has to, it cannot occur outside of Japan at all. So the, the entire process, none of it. You can't even, you know, source certain parts of it if you want to be part of this. So it's pretty strict in that regard. Um, and they have to be aged in casks no more than 700 litres. Um, for 700. a minimum, yeah, 700 liters for a minimum of three years. Um, the spirit has to be at least 40% with uh, ABV. <laughs> the whiskey has to be at yeah. least 40% ABV, which, thank the Lord, I mean, it's not like. That was a very, um, it's pretty rare to get a Japanese whiskey under 40%. Oh, that. yeah, that's what I was about to say. I think yeah. that, like, they because, were because they were already, you're either a legit company or you were sourcing and you're just getting, you know, 40% anyway. Already, so. Yeah. So, but still, I think having that just benchmark there set for you to not go below, I think that that's a great idea. Yeah. And it also shows consistency for things like Scotch and bourbon, because yeah, they're both the same. That, you know, it's like, look where we understand the way the rest of the world operates, what people expect, um, we're going to adhere to that. So they're following suit, and I think that that is going to instill a lot more trust in people. Um, packaging, bottling must take place in Japan, not anywhere else. So that's what we're talking about with Scotland. You can, so now other countries won't be able to import Japanese whiskey and bottle it as Japanese, Japanese, <laughs> as Japanese whiskey yeah. in a different country. So they, it can only leave um, Japan in yeah. a labeled finished yeah. product bottle to be called Japanese whiskey, which is really good. Cause I think that that's something Scotland does that's really limiting uh, for people to kind of like meddle with and fool people with. I think that it's it's a good thing to do. I think that's a good safe option. Uh, Colouring E150. Yeah. They can still use a bit of that. They don't specify percentages. Uh, but if you're still... Look, I think if you're still... If you've got the minimum age of three years, uh, you shouldn't be too worried about the kind of... The, no, well, it depends on the climate, I guess. So, who knows? It's kind of the same deal as scotch, I guess. Um, I like these. They... Strength, the... Oh, wait, sorry. What were you going to say? Yeah, I like these new rules. They're kind of like aligning them with scotch, mainly. Yeah. Um, which is just align it with the rest of the world. Yeah. It's now long, no longer the wild west. It's... Exactly. And as we said, it's only members of this association that it applies to. It's not like law within all of Japan. Yeah. But I don't but see all the why. Big companies will go with exactly. This, I don't see why any company, any distillery that is legit wouldn't join this, so everyone knows they're, they're legit. Forwards. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> but you'll see that though. If they it's don't, honey, that's why we're doing it's this. It's really hot. Yeah. Um, if they don't jump to this, then no, no. there's well, there's at least like reason for suspicion. Um, I don't see why legit companies wouldn't just join this to alert everyone to how to their legitimacy. Yeah. I just don't see why anyone would not do that. It's just a clear way of being really honest and upfront with their uh, workings and production. And to say, yes, to have confidence. We have confidence in our, pr in our product. You should too, because we're part of this. So I, I feel like the people who don't join it are just going to be people who don't either do not care what people think and judge that it's just not worth it because they, I don't know, they're just hitting mass markets or people who can't because they don't meet the requirements. And when are these coming into? 1st of April 2021. Yeah. Um, but they've obviously got to make it yeah. again. And so it's going to be a couple of years, a few years before like, or well, three all, years, yeah. I guess, because unless you've already, you're a distillery, like maybe Suntory and Nick have already adhered to all of these and can slap it on They're bottles that, are, that do adhere to it. But I think a lot of people are going to have to start that production and you'll see the finished product that gets that label slapped on it in, within a few years or three years maybe. Yeah. Um, and there was something, yeah, so distillation it must be distilled to less than 95 ABV. Now this is something that bourbon... To less than? Less than 95 ABV. 
Oh yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. So it makes Bourbon, a lot more sense. Bourbon has a similar thing. I'm not sure if it's 95. It might be 90. I don't know. There's a there's a limit. Oh no, actually, I think it's much lower, like 60 something or 70. I don't know. But anyway, bourbon has some limitations in what you can, what you know, percentage you can distill it at. It's not like vodka. We can run it through a column still and come at, come out at 98 percent and you're good. You have to distill it at a certain percentage. It can't. It has to be lower than a certain percentage. And that's like this 95. I mean, you don't. <laughs> It's not really limiting. You don't really need to go. I was thinking go. proof. That's why I tried. Oh right, yeah. I was thinking why we why it's so much proof. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So yeah, um, ninety five is not limiting in any way. I think most column stills are run a tiny bit higher than that. You really barely need to do anything. That's no. not gonna. It's not gonna do anything to that. But it's still something. It's still mm. them caring. I think it's important to point out that this isn't going to affect anyone that drinks Japanese whiskey. To a like to a certain degree, no. You're still gonna get the same whiskey. You're just gonna have oh, yeah. further confidence that it's actually Japanese yeah. whiskey. Unless, look, this is gonna like it may only affect the people that are part of this association, but most major companies um, are part of this association, yeah. and um, they're gonna like you may see discontinuation for some whiskies that don't meet it if they want their entire line to be to yeah. be um, all above board kind of thing. Like, uh, but. This can't hurt anyone. It can only hurt the people that are trying to pull the wool over your eyes by selling you a marked up item but I mean, they because of a label. Um, they can still do that, but if you pay attention to... So if you like who, that whiskey, yeah. Oh yeah, if you like the whiskey. Yeah, but I mean, most it. people aren't in aren't this in-depth with Japanese whiskey. Like, they probably don't care. Yeah. If they like the whiskey, they like the whiskey. They That's true. Care. If this is something you care about, this is a benefit to you. If it's something that you don't care about, this has no effect whatsoever. Yeah. Either way, I think it's good. It's a good step towards the right direction. It's, it's only a world, start, world. but it's it's yeah. yeah, it is. It's really setting itself up with everyone else, so we can trust them again, build up that rapport. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Whiskey. I know it wasn't a review; it was just a bit of a news update. But I thought it was cool. We thought it was cool because it's a, it's something we, at least touch on every yeah every or or every second like time we review any Japanese whiskey. We have to preface it with if we're not 100 percent sure it's legitness. We have to mention that Japan's a wild, wild. <laughs> Japan's a wild, wild west. So, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you next one. Cheers. Cheers.